Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's Classroom. Well, I know this video is posted a bit earlier than my regular schedule because this topic is so urgent and I want to bring this to you as soon as possible. So the most uh, buzz, the most noticeable news surrounding COVID vaccine this week has to be the FDA advisory committee meeting on Friday, September 17th, which look at the efficacy and safety data Pfizer presented to support the approval of the third dose or booster dose of COVID-19 vaccine for everyone above 16 years old. I was watching the whole meeting streamed on YouTube for pretty much the whole time, and that was an eight hour meeting. Now, so I decided to give you a digest, a very quick digest, which summarized the key points that uh, led to the ultimate vote, which rejected the Pfizer's original asking for everyone above 16 years old. And we will also look at some of the remaining unanswered questions after this meeting. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's have a quick recap of what happened at the meeting. The full meeting was streamed on YouTube and it's also now recorded. So this link can take you right there and you can watch the whole meeting. Now, much of my data was uh, captured from this meeting for today's presentation. Basically, the Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee met to answer two very important questions. The first one is, is the third Pfizer dose safe? And the second question is, the third Pfizer dose effective? The meeting began with Israel Health Ministry and Pfizer took turn to present real-world evidence and clinical trial data to support the claim of safety and effectiveness of the third Pfizer dose. So let's look at the first question, is the third dose safe? Now remember the safety data here is only limited to two months between July and August when um, Israel was doing the third dose and Pfizer was doing the clinical trial. Overall, the reported short-term adverse event following the third dose was very similar to the second dose. Briefly, most noticeable adverse events were fatigue, headache, chills, and muscle pain, and you noticed that in the younger group, between 18 to 55 years old, the incidents were between 50 some percent to 60 some percent. And in the older group, between 65 to 85 years old, the adverse event incident were a little bit lower. Notice the third dose phase one study had only 11 people between 18 to 55 and 12 people between 65 and 85. And the third dose phase three study had 306 participants between 18 and 55. Now, I know you have questions. Please save that. I'll answer those age questions at the end. And this low number actually is not enough to observe rare side effects. So this piece of data would have to come from Israel's real world evidence. And here is the table data presented by the representative from the Ministry of Health from Israel. Now, they mentioned after giving the third dose to more than 2.8 million people in the country, there were only two severe adverse events because of allergic reaction caused by the vaccine. Five other events are still being investigated. This include one myocarditis case in a 30 to 40 year old male. He had chest pain and fever for three days after the third dose of the vaccine. Now the second question, is the third dose effective? The first piece of data was the neutralizing antibody titer level. This graph is from a small phase one study. This shows a third dose increased neutralization antibodies in both younger and older age groups. The real world evidence from Israel again showed how the booster dose helped to decrease the rate of severe disease in people aged 60 and above. 
They also presented a model to predict situation without the booster. Basically, they believe if the third dose were to be given a few weeks later, their hospital system would be overwhelmed because of too many severe cases. Now, notice that Israel is not U.S. and the main difference is that the fully vaccinated population is different between the two countries. So you cannot translate the third dose benefit directly from Israel to United States. And also, Israel did not mention the benefit in younger population. Then the advisory committee asked many important questions. Pfizer was able to answer some of the questions briefly,、uh, but at the same time they failed to provide detailed evidence to support their claim. So let's look at some of the most crucial ones. The first question is that why was Pfizer only reporting neutralization antibodies? What about cellular immune response? Pfizer responded that they had great data on memory B cells and T cells response from immunization, and they were working great in the general population. But they argue B cells and T cells cannot protect against general infections and spread, and only neutralizing antibodies can do the job. However, Pfizer did not provide B cells and T cell data in the meeting. The second question is why not make the booster dose for the Delta variant? And actually, a few of you have also asked me in the comment section. Here, Pfizer presented data showing the Delta variant is not escaping the vaccine as much as the Beta variant. And this graph from a study conducted at Kaiser Permanente, Southern California, showed that the waning on effectiveness of the vaccine is not because of the Delta variant, but rather just because of the time. So, in other words, is that there is no need for a new vaccine specifically designed for the Delta variant to boost the vaccine effectiveness at this time. And here comes the third question. One of the more critical question is that what is the specific antibody title level needed for protection? At this point, Israel is trying to find out the answer to this question, and Pfizer claimed that this question is quite complicated, and they cannot come up with an answer just yet. So after all the data presented, we still don't know the level of antibodies that can offer infection protection. And the only thing we could do at this point is to give people the booster dose to keep the antibody level up. And there are more criticism from the committee member during the meeting. First one: If there is cellular immunity present, then why not show the data in the, this important meeting, right? Why was Israel seeing increasing severe cases? Shouldn't the B cells and T memory cells protect against severe disease? Well, the Pfizer have no answers for that. And second, how could a study with 306 people demonstrate safety data, in particular the risk of myocarditis for younger people? This is the exact information needed for risk and benefit analysis. And again, Pfizer said this information could only be observed in pros approval pharmacovigilance or monitoring study. And one very straightforward question or criticism: Can the third dose help reduce transmission? Pfizer said no data support that. Very disappointing. And let's look at the final outcome of this meeting. And if you are watching this video all the way through at this point, you would not be surprised. The committee member voted no. Okay, 16 of the 18 members voted no for not having enough evidence showing safety and effectiveness supporting the approval of the Pfizer third dose for everyone above 16 years old. But the meeting didn't stop here. All 18 members voted on a second question: yes, to recommend the booster dose for individuals 65 and above and people at high risk of severe COVID-19. Now, one of my viewers, J M, left a comment asking how they could support this recommendation when there were no. 
people older than 55 years old enrolled in the phase 3 trial? How could they see the science at this point? And Pfizer was very smart and they anticipated this question and presented the basis for extrapolation of phase 3 third dose data for people older than 55 years old, which was based on the FDA emergency use authorization for vaccine to prevent COVID-19 guidance for industry released in May 2021. Now it mentions that studies may be conducted in a single age group with extrapolation of results to other age groups for which the prototype vaccine has been authorized, which means as long as the vaccine can show immunogenicity in 18 to 55, then the FDA would allow the industry to extrapolate the result to the older group. And in terms of the safety for people over 55 years old, Pfizer mentioned both local and systemic reaction after the second dose are lower in people over 55 years old compared to the younger group. So they predict, okay, they predict the similar lower side effect would also seen after the third dose. Notice it is only their prediction. They don't have data for that. Now there are still questions remain to be answered after the meeting. And basically, the ball is now being thrown to the CDC ACIP committee. And these are the questions. First one is, who are the people at high risk? Should healthcare workers and people at occupational risk of exposure be recommended for the third dose? And one of the more complicated questions is how the upcoming recommendation from CDC affects the White House third dose announcement, or will the announcement from the president put pressure on the CDC ACIP committee? And how would the recommendation from CDC change the vaccine mandate? And would fully vaccinated means having three doses for some people and two doses for others in the near future? According to the ACIP meeting schedule posted online, they will be holding a meeting on September 29th and likely to discuss the question that I mentioned above. Everyone can watch the meeting streamed online as well. And meanwhile, public can also submit written comments to the ACIP before that day. And I have the links in the description below. And I highly encourage everyone to use the link to send in their thoughts. The final third dose recommendation will impact a lot of us. However, we still don't have answers for people like me and my family who had received the Moderna and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Now, no matter what your vaccine status is, I believe everyone has the right to see the evidence of the safety and effectiveness of the booster dose. And I will closely follow these uh, news and updates that is presented at different level. And if you would like to continue to follow these updates with me, please consider subscribing uh, to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. And lastly, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think about the FDA experts' uh, decisions. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, that's all for this week, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay safe and healthy. Bye.